The Google Family Link app is the best way to manage your screen time and promote healthy digital behavior for your children. In our household, we are a very online connected family. My wife and I are heavy phone users for personal entertainment, plus we've allowed our kids to own their own tablet and phone, albeit without a SIM card at this time for my eldest daughter. We reward our kids with appropriate access to YouTube, Disney Plus and Netflix. It's an important outlet for relaxation and quiet time. However, like most parents, we're always concerned about enabling our children to have unfettered and unlimited access to devices. To that end, we've come to heavily rely on the tools and utility of Google Family Link, an app that enables parents and guardians to manage screen time on compatible family devices. The app not only gives you control as a parent, but can be set up to give your child varying levels of autonomy to foster self-determination and encourage adopting their own responsible online behaviors, depending on their unique level of maturity. Google Family Link does require a Google account for both you and your children. The use of the login credentials provides the necessary security and also the ability for Family Link to identify the different devices. Furthermore, your fellow parents and caregivers can also be given access to the app via their own Google accounts. It's a little odd that children of any age will be set up with an email account, for instance, but for those parents concerned, it's possible to switch off access to every Google feature and app in your child's account via the settings. Once set up, you can then log on to your child's device with the new account credentials. One nice feature is that with an increasing amount of schools using Google Workspace for education, you can also sync with their school profile and have access to the resources set up by their teachers. The Family Link app homepage is arranged with your connected children's accounts displayed in the main area. Then you have access to the family options at the top where you can review the family members, plus manage the parental controls for each adult. The menu at the top gives you quick shortcuts to your children's account settings, family group mentioned before, approval requests, parent access code, notification settings, plus some resources for parents to help manage their digital lives with more confidence. Your family group can be managed by visiting families.google.com. Here, you'll be able to add up to six people who can share your Google services, including your purchases on Google Play Movies, and also eligible apps. You can also set a maximum of two parents from the group who have administrative control over the child devices. Under the Manage Setting menu option is where you control the high level access to all the main Google services. For Google Play, you can set approval levels for new apps, movies, and shows. This is further broken down into purchase control and whether you want to approve any purchases requested by your children, approve purchases using your family purchase method like an adult's credit card or Google Play, approve in-app purchases or remove approval altogether, which might be useful for older children as they mature and you encourage them to adopt more responsibility by themselves. Below that is the area for setting the age rating limit for apps, games, films, TV shows and books. Another important section is the parental settings for YouTube. Here, you can edit the content age level and also toggle the ability for your child to search for videos on and off in YouTube Kids. If your child has a supervised YouTube account, you can also adjust the content settings here for videos and music. Under the Google Chrome section, you're able to adjust the restrictions for browsing using a Chrome browser on your child's device. In the Google Search settings, you'll be able to toggle the Safe Search option that removes explicit results from search queries using the Google Search engine. Under the Google Assistant settings, the main functions are the ability to retrain your child's voice match to enable Google Assistant to identify your child for personal results and responses. You can also remove the voice profile or turn off the personal results should you want to increase their anonymity, although you do lose out on some of the fun and useful AI features when using Google Homes and Nest Hubs. The Google Photos option is the ability for your child to take photos on their device and use Google Photos to share the content with other Photos users. The final section includes some important account info settings. Here, you'll be able to adjust your child's name, review their email address, date of birth, and set their gender. Under the Controls of Signing In section, you can control whether your child needs your permission to use their Google account to log into devices that can't be supervised by Family Link, including non-Google devices and apps such as iPads, iPhones, and other browsers. The next section is called Controls for Third-Party Apps, and enables you to control access to data sharing with third parties. Some apps and services require the child to log in with their account credentials, including their name and email address. The location settings enables your child's device to be shown in the Family Link app or Google Maps using the location sharing feature, either on web or Google Maps the app itself. The final section is focused on more detailed options to increase or decrease the privacy settings for your child's account, including whether you want to be able to review their app activity. 
The submenu includes even more detailed options, going over the account data settings, including whether your child can manage their own privacy settings, which is a great option for older children. In the first section, App Activity, you'll be able to review your child's total time spent on the device by time across all of the devices managed by Family Link. It's a handy way to check in on screen time when parents get inevitably distracted. You can tap on each day and review each individual app used that day. Tapping on More will bring up the complete list of apps. On the right-hand side by each app, you can also see a small egg timer icon. Tapping on it brings up a submenu that enables you to adjust access between four states. The first option is No Limit, which means that the app can be used for an unlimited amount of time. However, the device schedule that you can set will supersede the individual app time limits, which I'll explain more later in this video. Tapping Always Allow is similar to No Limit. The device's master schedule will still be active, but time spent on the app won't count towards the child's daily limit. As described in the pop-up, some system apps are required to operate the device and fit within this category. Choosing Set Limit enables you to set a daily time limit by app, up to 23 hours and 59 minutes. This option is a good choice for limiting YouTube time but enabling your child to still be able to use their device for other apps. The final option is Block, which stops the child from seeing and using the app on their device. Location enables you to see your child's device location in real time. Tapping on the map will launch an interactive map using a light version of Google Maps. You can also see your child's location on the full version of Google Maps, either on web or in your phone app. The next section shows all the available supervised devices. The only option here is to lock the devices or add additional bonus time in increments, which are added to the master schedule you create. This is a really useful feature for those times to enable creating a reward system or extending your child's session for one-off situations. The Daily Limit section is a quick overview of the amount of time your child has spent on each device with an option to adjust the limits. The submenu is split into Daily Limit and Bedtime. The Daily Limit enables you to set the minute and hours your child can use the device by day. A nice touch is that you can adjust the available minutes on a given day and also apply the changes to all days or the weekend quickly, saving you time and effort to adjust limits individually. The Bedtime schedule enables you to set the downtime for the device. During the selected period, the device will automatically be locked, overriding any daily limit changes. Again, you can set the limits by day individually or use a shortcut to quickly copy your changes to weekdays or weekends. The last section includes a quick access to all the supervised devices connected to your child's account. Here, you can have more administrative control over the devices to varying degrees. Tablets and phones include the most options with one really useful feature. In the event that your child has mislaid their device, you're able to make it play a sound remotely to help locate it. I've lost count of the number of times my daughters have misplaced their phone or tablet around the house, and this feature has saved a lot of time. Going deeper into the administrative features, here you can set whether your child has their own device admin rights, including being able to add additional users, install apps from outside of the Google Play Store via APKs, and switching on some of the developer options. Other useful admin options include the location settings and what technology in the local environment of the device can be used to increase the location accuracy. App permissions to enable or disable access to the device's main features such as calendar, camera, microphone and onboard storage. And if need be, you can change the screen lock password remotely too. The final option is the ability to remotely lock, reset and delete mobile devices depending on whether they are lost or stolen. Family Link also includes the ability to control your child's device even when offline. Should you be unable to connect online, you can still use your app to access a parental code. The feature works in much the same way as an authenticator app, generating a unique code offline which will be accepted by the child's device. This is especially useful for road trips where you're not always able to hotspot on an adult's device with data. A recent update to the Family Link suite of features is the ability to give your child restricted access to the full YouTube app, rather than just YouTube Kids. The new feature is great for giving older kids more autonomy, but also gives younger kids access to content that might be unavailable due to YouTube Kids' more stringent curation. You still have control over the content and can set up access that you can block certain channels which you deem inappropriate. Family Link has been an absolutely invaluable tool for helping raise our daughters. It gives us peace of mind that we can enable our children to learn how to use digital devices responsibly while also not relinquishing oversight for safety reasons. There are some redundancies in the user experience, with certain features being available in two different places unnecessarily, but the biggest omission by far, as my wife and I are concerned, is the ability to award incremental time for individual apps. For instance, our kids love YouTube, but we can restrict their time to 30 minutes a day by default. 
However, on occasion we'd like to award more time for good behaviour, but the only way to adjust the time is to change the limit and then have to reset the limit for the next day. It's a clunky workaround that would be solved by utilising the same existing functionality already used for the device schedule. Fingers crossed Google will eventually get around to fixing this. Thanks for watching and as always please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on the connected home and personal technology.